Hey guys, it's Faye, and it's time for the Abyss League and the War for the Atlas expansion in Path of Exile 3.1. If you're looking for a relatively cheap League starter, check out this Berserker, Brain Rattler, Ancestral War Chief Totems build. Ancestral War Chief Totems have been a perennial favorite since its introduction to the game. There's plenty of variants out there, and this variation uses the Brain Rattler Unique in a physical to lightning support gem to convert the entirety of the skill's damage to lightning damage. Despite the shock mechanic rework, Brain Rattler is a solid choice since it has a decent effect when enemies are shocked. It reduces both the enemy's casting speed and movement speed. The most important stats here are the lightning conversion and the lightning pen on the mace itself. The only other required unique for this build is the unique Spire of Stone Jewel. This is pretty much a no-brainer in any totem build to prevent your totems from being stunned. While there are only two required uniques for this build, there are plenty that provide additional power and survivability. The unique Thunderfist gloves are a solid addition to this build. While the lack of armor is certainly a downside, the added flat lightning damage to attacks, attack speed, and shock duration make it a solid fit regardless. For your helmet slot, you can't go wrong with either Devoto's Devotion or Abyssus. Devoto's brings extra movement and attack speed at the cost of a small amount of reduced physical damage, and Abyssus sacrifices your defenses to add a considerable amount of flat physical damage to your attacks. The usual picks for the chest slot work nicely here, and those are Carcass Jack and Belly of the Beast. A well-rolled belly of the beast will likely set you back a fair amount of currency as life has definitely become more meta. Carcass Jack is a slightly more budget option in that it offers some area damage and increased area of effect in exchange for less survivability in comparison to belly of the beast. This is the Abyss League and with it comes an interesting pair of unique boots, the Bubonic Trail. They're interesting in that they give 10% increased damage for each type of Abyssal Jewel affecting you. Considering the fact that the murderous type of Abyssal Jewel can grant flat fizz and elemental damage to attacks, it might be worth the investment since the boots certainly aren't bad with only a 20% increased damage output with your two free jewel slots. The only problem is whether or not the build can make use of the Hypnotic Eye Jewel type to make good use of the increased damage mod. This particular jewel type seems to be spell focused, but it may have some applications for the build if elemental or lightning damage mods can be rolled on it. With the War for the Atlas expansion coming out simultaneously with the Abyss League, we have even more options for gearing. While these are all certainly nice options, the new Shaper and Elder rare items with good mods could possibly outclass any of the optional uniques mentioned. With this in mind, use your own judgment when deciding how to gear up. It's certainly exciting to see rare items finally getting a day in the sun, and some could definitely compete with unique items in numerous item slots. As for unique flasks, I recommend three when you can obtain them. At Ziri's Promise, The Wise Oak, and Lion's Roar. The most budget option of these three is at Ziri's Promise, but you should save up for the Wise Oak and Lion's Roar when you can. You will have to make sure your Lightning Res is the highest in order to benefit from the Lightning Pen of the Wise Oak, but it's definitely worth it. For the build's Ascendancy, I chose Berserker for its DPS and synergies. The major boons here are 40% more damage via the Aspect of Carnage Ascendancy node, 25% increased attack speed from the Rite of Ruin node since your totem's kills don't count as your kills, and the Warbringer node serves as nice utility since it can turn your Enduring Cry into a pseudo-hybrid flask. For your Ascendancy order, get to Crave the Slaughter with your normal lab points, 
Next, get Aspect of Carnage with your Cruel Lab Points. Grab Rite of Ruin with your Merciless Lab Points. And lastly, Warbringer with your Uber Lab Points. The build uses two solid keystones in the passive tree. These two keystones are Ancestral Bond and Resolute Technique. Ancestral Bond allows you to have two Ancestral Warchief Totems. Resolute Technique means your totems will never miss, and there's really no downside as this is not a crit build. Next, let's go over the gem links for the build. Ancestral Warchief is supported by Elemental Damage with Attacks, Physical to Lightning, Concentrated Effect, Melee Physical Damage, and Ruthless. In order to apply the Conductivity Curse, the Reliable Orb of Storms Curse on Hit setup works nicely. Enduring Cry is also conveniently placed here in the fourth free socket, and as mentioned before, it's almost like an extra flask for the build with the Berserker's Warbringer Ascendancy node. For auras, the build uses Hatred, Herald of Ash, and Clarity linked to a level 3 Enlighten. Clarity is only leveled to level 16 for mana convenience since the build isn't using blood magic. Until you can get a level 3 Enlighten, drop Herald of Ash, or temporarily take the Aura Mana Reduction nodes next to the Purity of Flesh Life Cluster. The build uses a very standard Leap Slam movement setup. Link it to faster attacks and fortify. Ball Haste ends up fitting best in this setup since it has a spare slot. Ball Haste is a major DPS cooldown. It's great for bosses and tough enemies. Cast wind damage taken setups are solid and this build is no exception. Link it to a mortal call, summon stone golem, and increase duration. You want to eventually level this setup fully, but keep an eye on your life to make sure you aren't putting yourself at a disadvantage while leveling and gearing. I generally prefer to make my cast wind damage taken amount roughly half of my life total. Something important to note, especially for new players, is that increased duration can be leveled to 20 as soon as possible, and it's not restricted by cast when damage taken's level. Since the Brain Rattler is a Minotaur Guardian drop, you can use the usual Ancestral Warchief leveling strategy until they are more available. Use what you can until level 28 when you can switch to Ancestral Warchief totems as your main skill. Use whatever weapon you can find with the highest physical DPS, and level until level 28 with your melee skill of choice. I prefer Sunder, and so does everybody else. Get support gems for the build you can find, and level them as you level. If you're missing any as options from your usual gem vendors and quest rewards, trade for them, or wait until you unlock the Golden Pages library quests in Act 3, and then buy any missing gems from Siosa. Some will be unavailable until later because of progression restrictions. Buy those from Lily at the beginning of Act 6 after completing her quest if you decide against trading for them with other players. Once you hit level 28, switch to Ancestral Warchief and take Ancestral Bond in the passive tree. Continue to use whichever leveling, rare or unique, gives you the most physical DPS. Instead of physical to lightning, use an alternate gem in your setup like added fire damage. Once you acquire and can use a brain rattler, you can swap added fire damage for physical to lightning in order to reach 100% physical to lightning conversion. Overall, this build should be a solid league starter. There will be people pushing to reach the Elder fight, and as a result you should see Brain Rattlers showing up fairly quickly at decent prices on your trade site of choice. Until then, just play without physical to lightning and use the leveling setup mentioned before. Whatever your goal in the new expansion and league is, this build should be up to the task with sufficient gearing. Personally, I'll be using this build as a league starter myself this league and pushing the new Atlas. I have information about the build and a path of building import code in the Google document below for easy reference, and also timestamps to each part of the guide in the description below. If you have any questions about the build, feel free to ask. 
If this guide helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. It really helps out a lot. And I try to have a build video for the start of each new Path of Exile League. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck in Abyss League and War for the Atlas. And until next time.